about it there. And we're going to talk about insurance, article, insurance, car insurance, comprehensive insurance, collision insurance. And after we finish like kind of talking about insurance, and gives you something uh, to remember. we will and jump like right into investment like strategies. So just be sure I'm going to go over what I a few things Don't about car insurance that I promised I would share so just a little from detail. last week. Um, I'll okay, answer any questions you have, and we can spend time on any Again, issues you want to talk about. Just um, um, a link if you have any end, questions, you're welcome to pop the those into the chat. Assignment, um, which is let's see, not a big deal. So we'll get started here in a minute. If you're Alexandra, these, how are you doing? I have to review. It's really helpful to have uh -oh. the name of the resource. I'm looking for a resource in here. And Hold then on, I can't hear you. I'm comments, sorry. Your Give me just outline, a second. Your uh, bullet points of what you learned. Mm in that resource instead of having the links used here at the bottom without having the content related to those resources. Say something, Alexandra. I'm so having trouble it, with this. This is probably a standard way to do it. Include the links at the no, end, sucks. which is fine. But I would also encourage you just to put the links in with the content I'm related to the resource my, just to, to make it a an easier read, a better mm. read. So that's minor. Uh, if you got any deductions, that's what it, uh, you got deductions for. Those of you who have not yet completed this assignment, I would encourage you to pay attention to that and um, okay. make sure you address. Say you know, something now, Put your Alexandra. article, your, your resource. Hey there. Um, in the article, I so you're can. putting a link to two different videos and two different got, articles. Hold on, I've got to helpful. shut down. And then you're um, telling me why you found it helpful. And so just put that into. I've got uh, I'm going to show you one or two problem. more, just so you can see. I think this was the very first one, Michael. I think yours was the first one I graded, and so this is what I see, I'm, which is fine. You gave me the uh, the article. A short snippet of what you gained from that not R article but right now video. I'm hearing and so then you put the link down here um, I'm doing a tutorial video somewhere but I can't find it on my computer to shut actually it off didn't have a resource so Michael I don't know though I'm not to tell you I didn't mark sure it down for that but for I those of shut you everything are, down again haven't yet done this assignment mm. if you send me a resource i'm very uh, likely uh, to click on it and if i get this uh, so resource sorry. not available then i'm going to say you didn't give I me two turn links. off my audio so you may want to give me three no oh, give me just a just second check here. your links i'm not sure what happened here michael but i've tried oh everything i know what I it can. is I, you may have missed a digit on the end when you copied and pasted i'm not Got sure but something uh, anyway all in all, you guys are doing a fantastic job, and I appreciate it. And so I'm going to leave it at, at that. That's what if you have questions, uh, feel free to jump. I found it. Okay. Um, so, Alexandra, I think I can hear you now. How are you doing? Yeah, I appreciate that. So this is your time. This is your time. If you have questions, especially related to your homework assignments, this is your time. We also have a time on Friday um, where I'm doing the tutorial for each week's assignment. And I try to do that pretty close to noon. And then after that, I have a window open. So my office hours are basically Tuesday during this time that's what this time is for and then also again on friday so friday you can schedule uh time with me you know in the afternoon i have a special calendar for office hours you've been using my business calendar which has a lot more openings but they're very tightly monitored so um sorry about that i'll post 
the uh, the link to my office hour calendar though so that you have it. I'll post that. Is group me good for you, Alexandra? So your question, which I really wanted to help you answer, it looks like you, you said your question was you wanted to make sure you knew how to input the insurance information in your data card in your plan so that you didn't lose points, right? Yep. And, and that's, you know, that, that's what's going to drive the cost of the insurance is the value of the house. And, you know, you're not going to lose points on that. I wouldn't. That's kind of really inside baseball. Um, so I wouldn't worry about that part of your assignment. And you have more points than anyone in the course, by the way. So way to go. You're doing great. But you don't need I wouldn't spend any more time trying to figure out if you have enough insurance. Your job and what I would encourage you to do, along with other students who are in the course, looking at some rather big goals, like you want to you want to buy a house, and you want to buy a house on a salary because you want to be a teacher, that's going to make it a challenge. So you're going to need a good plan. You're going to need good strategies to help you achieve your goals, and that's true for everyone. And so I would rather see you spend your time focusing on, okay, how are you going to make that come together? The insurance is really secondary. And, um, and as far as your points, you're doing great. So don't waste any more time on that. Start spending time. And this is an encouragement to everyone. Everyone, if you're, if you're out there listening, listen close. Because we're about to finish up insurance. I'm going to try and wrap up insurance as quickly as possible. And then we're going to move into investing, which is hands down the most popular topic in this course. But the, the thing is, we're going to cover a lot of ground between now and the next three weeks when the semester is over. And you're going to jump into your financial planning portal and you're going to take what you learn and you're going to have to apply it to your plan. And this is where I want you to start looking at looking at your plan as your plan. And so when I say your plan, I mean your goals. And the, I know that you're making some predictions based on uh, a hopeful salary that you'll get from a company uh, in your industry. And that's good. But I want you to start to look at your goals, your expenses, and your savings uh, strategies and I want you to start to make those as realistic as possible. So all that uh, credit crush assignment that I asked you to do, that's in the past now. So I want you to look at your housing, whether it's rent or house, and just update that and make it as accurate as possible. Because moving forward, I'm going to start teaching you some strategies for investing. And I want you to take what I teach you and actually apply it in your financial plan. So as we get closer to the capstone, you'll see how it all comes together. And so that's really the focus moving forward is to pay attention to your plan and pay attention to the pieces of the puzzle that you've put in place in your planning portal. And I'm going to help you do that. But today we've got to get through insurance. There's so much to cover in this course. It's like we do a hundred miles wide and about a quarter inch deep. But and insurance is one of those areas. You know, my hope is to stir you up just a little bit to make you realize that insurance is a very expensive part of your budget. It will be just like your homeowner's insurance. It's an expensive piece of your overall financial plan insurance. So I want to try to stir you to be as smart as you can about the coverages that you buy. And really, you're not going to do that in this course. This course is going to expose you to a lot of information, but it's an introduction, an introduction to insurance. And so today I'm going to tell you some stories because I want you to understand uh, a couple of coverages in your insurance and in your car insurance because my assumption is pretty much everybody is going to be driving a car 
and car insurance is really important and the big picture of your insurance planning. But there's so much more. There's life insurance, health insurance, um, and just life insurance alone, I could spend an entire semester teaching you about. So I want to answer all your questions. I'm going to provide some resources in your, uh, in your course portal. And in your financial planning portal, that's where you're building your plan, you'll see additional resources and additional pieces of the puzzle that can help you learn not just now, but moving forward as you start to wrestle with the real things that you're going to be dealing with when you graduate. So I hope that helps. Um, and I'm going to check to see if there are any questions posted. Um, yeah, Erica, <laughs> get rid of that fake debt. You don't want to have that hanging around. I totally get that. And again, that part of this semester, the credit crush assignment, I wanted you guys to see the the incredible impact that uh, debt can have on your financial plan and the power that you have when you start to apply smarter strategies for paying off debt. So that was the whole purpose of that. But now eliminate anything that's fake, but keep anything that you think is going to be a real part of your life after you start working and you start receiving that, that income. So that's what we're going to focus on moving forward. And I'm going to teach you how to set up your investments. Uh, and today I'm going to introduce you to the perfect investment. Have we talked about the perfect investment yet? I don't, I don't think we have. Um, tell me if we have. Usually I go over it about three times each semester. And I forget when I went over it. So we're going to, we have it. Okay, Ashley, thanks. Well, we'll definitely do that today. I wanted to introduce you to the perfect investment. And in addition to that, I'm going to um, introduce you to four investment strategies that are designed to help you maximize returns and minimize risk. But before we do that, I want to do a quick review of what's coming. So this week we're going to wrap up insurance. We're going to introduce investments. Again, the perfect investment and four investment strategies designed to maximize return and minimize risk. You don't want to miss that. That'll be next week, but today I'm going to introduce it. After that, you're going to jump into your financial planning portal and you're going to start to apply some of the things that I'm teaching you this week. Um, so this week, after today, after we finish this meeting, we're jumping right into investing. And you're going to take what I teach you and you're going to apply it in your plan. So your assignment this week is going to be take, to take what I teach you and start to apply it in your plan. To start with, I want to see you working on uh, an emergency fund. How are you going to save for an emergency fund? That's really number one. Before you start investing, saving is critical. And that emergency fund is part of those baby steps we talked about before. But then quickly, I want to teach you some of the things related to managing risk in investing. And I'm going to teach you that so that you can take what I learn and you can start to set up your investments the way that you're going to set up investments when you graduate and start working. So that's why we're going to start with the perfect investment, because that's uh, a perfect. Inv the perfect investment really deals with your company match in a 401k. So I want to make sure before you finish this semester, you know exactly what to do on day one when you get that job and you're sitting there with human resources and you're filling out paperwork. One of your choices, one of the things you need to do is sign up for your 401k. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. After we finish investing, uh, not next week, but the week after, you're going to go into your financial planning portal and you're going to take a look at your retirement plan. And you're going to see if your plan is, is succeeding, what's the probability of success. Many of you I know have already gone into that and played with it. But there's a major uh, piece of your financial plan which tells you the probability of success. And so I'm going to show you how these investment strategies can help you really move the needle on that probability of success. So we're going to take everything you've learned about investing, we're going to put it into your financial plan, and we're going to end up talking about uh, different tax strategies. So remember the three laws of personal finance. 
the law of spending and saving. Spending and saving. Spend less than you earn so you can save more for what matters most. Saving comes before investing. The second law of personal finance, though, is the law of tax-advantaged investing. And I promised you I was going to teach you the powerful tools related to tax-advantaged investing. And so I'll do that. It's part of the four strategies that I'm going to teach you designed to maximize return and minimize risk. So after we do investing, I'm going to teach you about types of accounts. Just think about that for a second. Types of accounts. You see, most people who start out don't realize how important types of accounts are. A 401k is a type of account. A Roth IRA is a type of account. A tax-deductible IRA is a type of account. Your checking account is a type of account. So I want you to start thinking there's something else you have to learn to be a good investor, and that is types of accounts. You have to have your money in the right type of account if you want to take advantage of the rules in the IRS code. So that's where we're going to wrap up. Once I show you how to properly allocate and manage your investments in the right type of account, you're going to see how much power there is for you to achieve whatever goals you set for yourself. So the baby steps start with saving, but then once you have saved, you start investing. And when you invest wisely, you're going to see that it's a very powerful thing. So that's where we're going uh, through the rest of the semester. And that's really your capstone. Your capstone is to take everything I just said, the assignments that you've done, and basically we create a comprehensive uh, planning report. You won't really see it. I'll see it. I'll, I'll look at it. You'll send me uh, all the pieces of your puzzle, and you'll see the assignment. It's not that different from the assignments that you've already done. In fact, much of it will be a duplication of what you've already done, where you're just saying, okay, here's my budget. Here's my you know, cost of living, my house, my car. Here's my investment plan. Now, you haven't done that yet but you will, and that will be part of the capstone. So the capstone is not difficult. If you pay attention from here on through the rest of this semester, it's going to come together pretty quickly. So that's where we're going. Today, we're going to talk about insurance and wrap it up. And if you have any questions, go ahead and put those in the chat, and I'll try to answer them. Again, there's so much information related to insurance that we really can't expect to be experts. I am an expert in insurance, and there's probably no question you could ask that I couldn't answer, but there's not enough time to get into all those topics. So I wanted to highlight a couple of things on your car insurance that I think you should know. I, would, I, want it, I want you to know. I think you'll find them valuable, and hopefully the stories will help you remember. So before we get into my favorite coverage of all, on any insurance policy. My favorite coverage on any insurance policy. Last week I told you about medical payments coverage. You remember that? those stories? On a homeowner's policy, which is a very common policy, whether it's a homeowner's policy if you own your home, or a renter's insurance policy if you're renting your home, that policy, the homeowner policy and the renter's policy, has two sections. One is for the property, what covers you and your property. And the other section, section two, is liability. And inside of that section is this thing called medical payments coverage. Very few people know what it is and how it works. But I told you some stories because I think on the homeowner's policy or the renter's policy, either one, I think that's a really important handy coverage. And I've used it many times. So I wanted you to know how it worked. So if you missed that, go back and watch that Zoom call. And I covered, I shared some stories. Hershey and his broken leg. My son Brandon and his cut knee. Um, anyway, so those stories were there to help you understand one little coverage inside of a policy package called a homeowner's policy or a renter's policy. It's a very common policy. To be a good consumer, you should understand how that policy works because you're going to spend a lot of money if you own a home 
You're going to spend a lot of money on insurance for that house. And we also talked about what's excluded, what's not covered. Every policy has exclusions. On a homeowner's policy, something you may not realize is not covered is really important to know it's not covered, which is what? I'm going to look here and see if anybody's paying attention. If anybody's with me, Ashley, yes, thank you, Carmen. You guys can see what Carmen wrote. It's flood. Flood is not covered on a homeowner's policy. If you didn't know that, you should know that. That means you have to buy a flood insurance policy. Because if you get flooded and in Houston, a coastal area, it's very likely that one day you're going to have a flood come right to your door. So that's homeowners. We covered that last week. This week I want to jump into auto. So you, you did some quotes and you did a great job. You guys, I haven't, I haven't graded all of your papers, um, but I definitely uh, graded enough of your your homework assignments to know that that this assignment is a, is a great assignment. You learn a lot about car insurance just by getting a quote. So congratulations. I hope you learned a lot. I hope that stays with you forever. Um, but I want to ask, there's one coverage that we shouldn't just brush over. It's liability. And you should, you should know how important that is because it protects you. Uh, and those three numbers, does anybody want to take a stab at telling us what those three numbers stand for so I can highlight that real quick before we move on? What are those three numbers in the liability of your auto policy cover? Those three numbers. So Alexander said bodily injury per person, bodily injury total. Yes, so the three numbers, let's say, 100, 350, 100,000, 300,000, 50,000. And the 100,000 is personal injury for one person who gets hurt in an accident. And your policy would pay up to that limit for one person who got hurt or killed in a car insurance accident that's your fault. That's why it's called liability. You have to be at fault. For that policy coverage to respond, the insurance company does an investigation and they have to determine that it was your fault. If it wasn't your fault, they're not going to pay. They'll defend you, which is really important because that's expensive, but they're only going to pay if it's your fault. So that limit, that 100, 100, 350, that 100 would be $100,000 for the injury or the death or disability of the person who's injured in an accident that's your fault. The second number is bodily injury total. So for example, if I'm driving my motorcycle and I get a little bit carried away and I end up swerving in front of a school bus and the school bus has to, you know, swerve to miss me and it's got 20 kids in it and there are 20 people in that accident and it was my fault my policy, that 300000 is going to cover the aggregate. So if there's 20 people or 10 people or you do the math, it's only going to pay up to that amount. How do they decide who's going to get what? It's tricky and it's not really scientific. It's sometimes very subjective, but that's how it works. They'll never pay more than that first limit for one person and they'll never pay more than that second limit for the for everyone who's injured in that accident. Finally, the third number is property damage. So in a, again, in that same example, let's say it's a school bus that swerves. The school bus was brand new. It was $90,000. I don't even know what a school bus costs, but I'm sure it's hundred grand. So the school bus is gonna have to be replaced. Um, and I'm, that's my responsibility if I cause the accident. And let's say the school bus happened to run into a telephone pole. And let's say the telephone pole fell on a house. And let's say the house caught on fire. And let's say the, the whole litter of golden retrievers. I know that's a sad thing to think about. But that would be property. I'm just trying to think of things to help you understand how important your liability insurance is. In the event that you cause the accident, you want to have good coverage. And that's why we talked a little bit about the personal liability umbrella policy, which gives you a million dollars over and above 
your home, and your auto. So there you have it. Any questions about liability before I move on? Not the pups. Yeah, sorry. That was just there to get your attention, and I'm glad it did. Thanks, Stefan. Um, yep, okay. I doesn't look like we have any questions about liability, so let's talk about my favorite coverage in any policy. Is it's It's called... So what do you think it's called? Under the auto policy, there are several coverages, and you've already told me what they are in your homework assignment. So now you get a chance to tell me again, not liability, that's section two, liability, and that includes personal injury protection, which covers you, and liability, which covers everyone else. But now let's talk about the property section, the part that covers your car, because that's what you're buying car insurance for. So comprehensive. Michael, that is it. That's my favorite coverage ever, and I'm going to tell you why. But what else is included? Yes, that's a great smile face, smiley face, Michael. Three smileys. Okay, anyone else, though? Medical payments is is homeowners, and it is my favorite coverage on a homeowner's policy, Erica. Um, and in auto, it's typically called personal injury protection. Some policies do call it medical payments, though, so I'm not sure what you're... But that's not my favorite coverage on a car policy. Collision. So I'm, that's what I was looking for. There's rental, there's collision, there's uninsured. There's a lot of coverages. There's um, uh, towing. I think it's emergency road service. I've used that a bunch of times, too. Anyway, so collision, I want to clarify and make the distinction between collision and comprehensive. So what, 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 what do you think those two coverages cover? Comprehensive and collision. Let's take, the, let's take collision first because it's the most obvious, it's the easiest, and it should be the most clear. So somebody tell me, what does collision coverage cover on your car insurance policy? Collision coverage is for, it covers, I'm waiting, collision for accidents. Okay, be a little more specific, Alondra. It does cover accidents. In fact, I told you last week that insurance is basically, in the insuring agreement, all contracts say that it's got to be sudden and accidental in order for your property insurance to respond and have coverage. So if it's not accidental, it's generally not covered. If it's rust, mold, something that happens over a long period of time, it's not covered anyway. So yes, that's just a little too general though. Collision does cover accident, but what kind of accident? Damage from accidents that you caused. So, Stefan, you're halfway right. Jewel, you two are halfway right. You said it's if it's your fault. It doesn't really matter whose fault it is. Your policy will cover your car. Now, let's talk about that for a second. Because if we get in an accident, if you get in an accident with me, and I'm driving my Winnebago, and your car gets damaged... Do you want to file a claim on your policy for that since it's my fault? Or would you prefer that I file a claim under my liability policy to pay for your car? Which would be better for you? Yeah, me, Vanessa, under my liability. And why would that be better for you, Vanessa? Why would it be better for you that I file a claim under my liability instead of you filing a claim under your collision? It's not a trick question. If you think about it doesn't affect you, that's right. Um, it, you, your rates won't go up, that's right. It won't affect your record, that's right, Erica. Um, your premium won't go up again, that's right, Stefan. I think you cheated, though, because somebody already posted that. So somebody tell me, yes, thank you, Vanessa. Deductible, deductible. What is your deductible? You guys, what is, what's your deductible? Somebody tell me, what is your deductible? What deductible did you put on your car insurance policy? You were typing it. You're not as fast. <laughs> nice job, Stefan. I appreciate it. Mine was 250 Carmen. Let me tell you, I don't, I don't know what kind of car you have, but if you have a 250 deductible, 
do you know what that does to your premium? 250 is a small deductible for a car. And 250 on collision is going to make your premium pretty high. So you might want to do another quote and just see. Maybe you did already. Maybe you already told me about it. But that's one of the things I would encourage. If I'm your insurance agent or your advisor or your friend, and I'm saying, hey, let's look at your car insurance and see if you're getting the best bang for the buck, one of the first things I want to find is low deductibles on your collision because you're paying a higher amount. And you don't want to ever have to use your collision coverage. Trust me, because your rates will go up if you use your collision coverage. That's different if we get in an accident that's my fault. That's different. So, but more about the deductibles. So, 250, Carmen, anyone else? So, most people, I guess, I'd say most people, it's either 500 or 1,000. If you go buy a brand new car and you're trying to get the best deal on your insurance and you can afford it, a lot of my clients had a thousand dollar deductible. So, uh, whatever that deductible is, though, the point is, if you file a claim on your collision, you're going to pay the deductible. So that's not good. That's why it's better if you, if I hit you, it's my fault. I should pay the claim. So that is collision. It's not my favorite coverage on the policy because it makes your rates go up and you have a deductible and. I don't ever want to get in an accident where I have to use that coverage. So let's talk about comprehensive. It's a little more difficult. The definition by itself is a little more difficult. So somebody help me out. You can Google it. You can ask Siri. You can just think about the word comprehensive, comprehensive, comprehensive. What does that mean, comprehensive? Just the word. Hmm, I'm waiting. What does the word comprehensive mean? Thus, what is the coverage comprehensive for? Everything altogether. Comprehensive is a type of insurance that protects your car from things other than an accident like falling objects and vandalism. Okay, Stefan, you put yourself on the spot here. Now I need you to unpack that a little bit. So comprehensive coverage is a type of insurance that protects your car from things other than an accident, comma, like falling objects and vandalism. So are you saying that those things, falling objects and vandalism, are not covered under comprehensive? Is that what you're saying? Because it doesn't really make sense to me what you said. It's like you got half the quote right. So, Alexandra, yes, it covers all, everything. So, okay, Stefan, you're saying they are covered. Good. You redeemed yourself there. Flood, fires, theft... Alondra, that's correct. It covers everything that's not an accident from a car. Hmm. So in other words, Stefan, that's right. That's right. That's important too. It's really important. So let's develop that a little so everybody understands. Because it's probably the most important thing to understand as we talk about collision vis-a-vis -vis comprehensive, how they work together on your policy. And you said comprehensive covers everything that's not an accident involving a car which we would have another word for that a specific coverage that we would call that we would call that a and this is what's excluded and if you read your policy and you read the exclusions you'll see the number one exclusion and every coverage has exclusions comprehensive even though it covers everything it has one big exclusion, kind of like the homeowner's policy. It covers everything except what's excluded. And the big exclusion on a homeowner's policy is flood. So what do you think the big exclusion would be on your comprehensive coverage? For a thousand points. Uh, if it was intentional. Erica? Intentional is typically not covered, period, ever, under any circumstances. But it's very, 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 very difficult to prove something's intentional. So it's not a, I don't even think it's an actual um, listed exclusion, but it may be. But that's not exactly it. It's not the number one exclusion. There is one exclusion that Stefan has already mentioned. I'm just saying, what's the word for it? Personal property inside the car. Alondra, that would be not an exclusion. That would be a non-covered property. 
So there's that's a different provision in a policy. It's a type of property. When we talk about exclusions, we're talking about perils, the things that create the accident, the risk, the, the event that causes the accident. Like flood is the peril that causes damage to your house, which is excluded because it's not covered because they don't cover flood. And your collision, I mean, oh, I gave the answer. Your comprehensive coverage provides coverage for everything except what's excluded. And one of the exclusions is manufacturing issues. No. Um, collision, it is. Yes, Stefan, it is because you heard me say it. So you don't get the thousand points. But thank you very much. We can now move on. Comprehensive. It covers everything except what's excluded. And collision is obviously excluded because if you had comprehensive coverage and no collision coverage, you wouldn't even need to buy collision coverage because comprehensive would cover everything. But obviously it doesn't cover collision. So let's talk about what it does cover. So I was, uh, it was a Saturday morning, a beautiful, crisp Saturday morning. And I happened to be in Homestead, Florida, working Hurricane Andrew. If you don't remember Hurricane Andrew, I know that was before your time. But it was, at the time, the most epic storm that ever hit the United States. And Homestead, Florida got leveled. And I was called to go work there just a few days after the storm. As soon as we could fly into Miami, I was in the first, what we called the first wave. So I was working Hurricane Andrew. My family was here in Friendswood, Texas. And my wife, we had a minivan, a nice little minivan. I liked it. It was a caravan, great little vehicle. We had um, three kids at the time. We still have three kids. Um, so actually, I think we had two. We had two sons. And they were, maybe we had our daughter. Anyway, we had the baby somewhere along the line. And they were at my wife and the kids were going to a little league baseball game and they were having donuts at the donut shop down the street from the little league field and my wife's minivan wouldn't start so there was this really nice man who was there getting donuts and he was in a truck it was a unique truck it was a kind of truck that you would use if you're a welder so it was a welding truck and this nice man this nice gentleman older man he was kind enough to offer a jump start to my wife. So he took his welding truck thingies and he touched them to the battery. Now, I don't know what you know about welding, but welding is generally 220 volts, sometimes more. But 220 volts is a pretty, it's, a, it's more than 12 volts, okay? Every automobile out there and Winnebago and motorcycle, they're all... 12 volt systems 12 volts is like how much pressure is behind the electricity the electrodes and 12 volt systems are great with 12 volts but what do you think happens when you put 220 volts that's 220 volts that's power in a 12 volt system what do you think what do you what do you think happens what do you think happened to my wife's minivan when this nice gentleman used his welding truck to give her a jump start because her battery apparently was defective. Anybody got a clue? Nobody, no car guys out there? Goodbye minivan, Jewel? It was kind of like that. It exploded. <laughs> Erica, <laughs> it didn't explode. <laughs> But kind of smoke started coming out from different places like the vent and under the hood. But it didn't actually explode. That's kind of funny, though. I'm an, I don't know. You guys probably don't know this, but I'm an old master mechanic. That's how I paid for college. I was a master mechanic. And I was doing work on a car one time, and it did actually explode. But it had nothing to do with the battery. That's another story. So, yeah, this sweet old man. Do you know what this sweet old man did, Alexandra? He left quickly because he knew that was probably not a good idea. I don't think he knew that when he did it, but he certainly knew he did a bad thing. 
because he saw smoke coming out under the hood. And obviously it melted the wiring harness and it was a disaster for the vehicle. So my wife calls me and I'm in Homestead, Florida, and she's desperate. What do I do? And I said, I'm really glad that, you know, you're safe. Don't worry about it. I was a super husband that day because I told her, I'll take care of this. It's not going to be a problem. We're going to get you another vehicle. We're going to have a rental vehicle because I knew we had rental coverage because I was I was a, a, an adjuster. I was an insurance adjuster with State Farm. I knew my stuff. And so I made sure we had rental coverage. And not only that, but I knew we had my favorite coverage of all, which is someone. Say it, type it, think it. What coverage did I have on my vehicle, on my minivan? Yes, thank you. It was comprehensive. And what does comprehensive cover? What does it cover? Because I knew something. I knew that that was not excluded. That a welding truck, a nice old man at the donut shop with a welding truck, trying to give my wife a jump. I knew that was accidental. I knew it was sudden. So far, we're good, right? We got to first base. Let's see if we can get to second base. It was sudden. It was accidental. Is it excluded? Is there an exclusion for that? No, there's not. Therefore, comprehensive must cover it. All but collision. Yep, that's right, Carmen. So it wasn't a collision. And so you bet. I called State Farm, and I made my claim, and I told them what happened, and I said... We're going to take it in the shop, and we're going to get an estimate, and we'll let you know. And by the way, we're going down to Enterprise, and we're going to rent another minivan. So my wife had this nice new vehicle to drive, because ours wasn't new. It was a used minivan. So I was feeling pretty good. This whole deal is going to work out great. And it did work out great, because we got like a new stereo system. We got a new wiring harness. We got a whole bunch of components replaced that I didn't even know were damaged. And it was a very expensive claim, and it cost me only $50. Now, why did it cost me $50? Somebody, why did it cost me 50 bucks? Because I had a deductible. And you may say, but wait a minute. You just said earlier that a $500 or a $1,000 deductible would save you money. And that's true for collision. But back then... This was like 1993, I think is when Hurricane Andrew hit. In 1993, you could buy comprehensive coverage with zero deductible in some states. Imagine that. No deductible. Anything that happens to your car is covered, unless it's excluded, with no deductible. What a deal. But I had a $50 deductible, so this cost me 50 bucks. It was a sweet deal. And my your rates do not go up when you file a comp claim. So I don't think, I think that's true at every insurance company. I know it was true at State Farm. So there you have it. That's one reason. That's one story about how that coverage works. And I want you to know how that coverage works. So any questions? It's pretty cool. Pretty cool deal, right? How my wife and I got our minivan fixed after the 220 volt nice man in the welding truck made smoke come out of every orifice in our vehicle. Question or story number two, when we moved from Houston or from Austin to Houston, it was 1989. So it's been a while, but I, at that time I was just learning insurance. I was going to school to become a claims adjuster with State Farm. And my friend, Big Vinny Vance, Vance Miller, he was a superintendent at State Farm. So he was my friend. We went hunting and fishing together. We, we went camping together. Our families were super, super tight. Well, I was going to school learning all of this stuff about claims and the contract and how it works. And so, you know, Vance, he was... He was already up in middle management, so he was way smarter than me. Well, he helped me move from Austin to Houston. And we're driving down the road, and we're in, it, we're in his suburban. 
brand new Suburban. So this was in 1989 and it would have been a 1989 or 1990, I think it was actually a 90, a new model Suburban. Red, beautiful, brand new. And we're cruising on the highway. Well, my son had to go to the bathroom, so we stopped. He went to the bathroom and we got some big gulps. Anybody know what a big gulp is? You know, big gulp? Big gulp? So the big gulp uh, was Vance had his big gulp and he put it in the console. And we're driving back on the highway doing 70 miles an hour, cruising down the highway. And Big Vinny reaches for his big gulp. And when he reached for his big gulp, he bumped the shifter in the console. And he went from drive, not just into neutral, but he went into reverse. Do you know what happens when you're going 70 miles an hour down the highway and you put your vehicle in reverse? Anybody got a clue what happens to your Transmission locks, gears lock. Does it stop? You might think it would stop, Alexandra, but it doesn't stop. I mean, it stops in terms of it won't work anymore, but it doesn't like lock it up and make it, you know, go in. You know, it, does, it just smokes everything inside the transmission. Not everything, but the clutches and a couple gears, and it basically stops working. And in fact, it stops working so much that you have to get a new transmission. And that's what happened in Vinny's Suburban. And so he calls me up a week later and he says, hey, Munch, because he called me Munch, because everybody called me Munch, because my name's Munchback and that's what people call me. So he says, hey, Munch, I got an estimate for the transmission at the dealer. He took his vehicle to the dealer because it was new. And he wanted to know if he should get a second opinion. I'm like, well, tell me how much. I know it's going to be a lot. Because remember, I was a master mechanic, which is why he was calling me. And before I went to work for State Farm, I was a full-time master mechanic. So he's like, it's 2500 bucks. Should I get another quote at like a transmission shop? I'm like, well, for sure, you're going to get it done cheaper anywhere but the dealer, right? You guys know that take your car to the dealer, it's going to be more expensive, almost always. But I'm like, dude, why would you pay to have the transmission? You should file a claim. He said, what are you talking about? I said, file a claim. Now, let me ask you, from what you know about what I've taught you so far, is there a coverage anywhere that you can think of <clears throat> that might possibly provide protection for the whole big gulp reverse 70 mile an hour scenario. Any coverage? Well, where would you go first? Your homeowner's policy? No, that doesn't cover your car. You'd go to your car insurance policy. And which coverage would you think might apply? Collision? No, not collision. Liability? No, not liability. It was Vance's fault. But rental? I mean, I'm not sure. Rental's not going to cover anything unless there's a covered loss. Rental will only pay for you to rent a car if you have a covered loss. So do we have a covered loss? Hmm. The transmission needs to be replaced and loan lease payoff. Uh, I don't know about that, Michael. Not sure I understand your question, but yeah, Carmen and Vanessa, it's comprehensive coverage. And when I told Vance that, he's like, you're crazy. That's not covered. I'm like, what are you talking about? And I explained to him how it covers everything unless it's excluded. And then I just described what happened. And I said, do you see an exclusion in your policy that says Big Vinny bumps his shifter <laughs> going 70? Um, we laughed. I laughed because it was kind of funny. It's like. What, who does that? <laughs> but he did, and he couldn't believe I was suggesting that he should file a claim, but I said, trust me, file a claim. And this is a guy who has way more time on, you know, he's been in the business a lot longer than me. I'm like, you should know that. But he was a liability management guy, so he did liability claims. He didn't do property claims, so I gave him a break. And I said, dude, just trust me, file a claim. So he files a claim, and guess what? They wrote him a check. They paid every penny except for his deductible. Now, 
let me ask you this. Do you think Big Vinny ever called me up and took me to lunch to say thanks? I think he still owes me lunch. But, again, comprehensive coverage. It's an amazing coverage. So think about all the things that could happen to your vehicle where comprehensive coverage would come into play. We talked about fire, trees falling down, hurricanes, flood. Unlike the homeowner's insurance, Unlike the homeowner's policy, flood is not excluded in, in a comprehensive claim. So, for example, we had Hurricane Harvey hit not long ago, and I have two Lexuses in my driveway. One is a 2008, one's a 2007. I love buying Lexuses with 100,000 miles on them. I get a great deal, and so that's what I did. And then we had Hurricane Harvey hit, and I didn't realize it, because remember, it rained so much, we, we didn't even go outside for like three days because you couldn't go anywhere. Well, turns out the water in, in the middle of the night, the water got up in our driveway and it got up in our cars and we didn't even know it. And I went out there and found wet carpet in both of our cars. So I called my insurance company, filed a claim for flood because I wanted to get new carpet. You know where that new car smell comes from? new carpet. And I thought, I'm going to get new carpet. So I called, filed a claim. They came out, they inspected. And you know what they did? They totaled both of my cars. Now we, ne we drove them every day. They, we never missed a beat. Nothing was wrong except the carpets got wet and we dried them out right away, but they were stained and I wanted new carpet. <laughs> they totaled the cars under comprehensive and so then they get ready to send me a check and they wanted the car. That's how it works. When they total a vehicle, they send you a check and they pick it up and it's called salvage. So my cars were salvage and there's a value to the salvage. And whatever that value is, the insurance company will typically let you buy it from them because they don't want to have to mess with taking it to an auction and if you're willing to buy it, they'll just say, okay, instead of giving you $10,000, we will de deduct, check this out, instead of giving me $10,000 for my car, they deducted $1,200 and gave me $8,800. And what happened to the car? I got to keep it and fix it and replace the carpet myself for like 300 bucks. Both of my cars, same story. What coverage was that? What coverage gave me that benefit? I'm still driving both of those cars. They still run perfectly. And I, they were paid for. Comprehensive. You need to know comprehensive. If you know how these coverages work, then you can make a much more informed decision about what's you know, which coverages you want to have on your policies, whether we're talking about homeowners or auto or life insurance or health insurance. You need, if you just understand the coverages, you can make a well-informed decision. And it'll give you a whole lot better opportunity when the time comes to actually use your policy if you're a well-informed consumer. So hope that helps. We're running out of time, which happens every week, so I want to talk a little bit about the perfect investment. I'm going to tell you uh, what the four investment strategies are before I let you go, but I want to introduce the perfect investment. The perfect investment is really a company match in a 401k. So if you get that job you're looking for, one of the things that I'm hoping you get with that employer is a company match in a 401k. So I want to tell you how that works and help you be prepared to take advantage of what I call the perfect investment. So when you go to work, there let's say you go to work for, I think Shell, I'm not positive, but Shell at one time had an 8% match. So let's just pretend that that's true. And let's just pretend to keep the math simple that you work at Shell and you make $100,000 a year. I know that's a big number and you probably won't get that your first job, but let's just pretend to keep the math simple. You make hundred grand a year and you have an 8% match. What do you have to do 
in order to get that 8% match. And first of all, how much is 8% of $100,000? How much is 8% of $100,000? I'm waiting. How much is 8%? I made it $100,000 to keep it really super simple. Thank you very much. Yes, it's eight grand. Very simple, not a trick question. So if you have a company match of 8%, and let's assume you're making 100 grand, they're going to match eight grand. But how do you get your hands on that eight grand? That's the next question. What do you have to do to get that perfect match, that perfect investment of eight grand? Anybody know? It's worth a thousand points. Actually not. I'm not going to give you a thousand points, but you should know this. And I bet half of you do know this. Maybe you just haven't thought about it. But I want you to think about it. How do you get your hands on that eight thousand dollars? Assuming you make a hundred grand, the company's offering you eight grand free match, but you have to do something to get it. You have to match it to, okay, that's right, Vanessa. So let's say you make a hundred grand. When you sit down with HR on day one, they're going to ask you, do you want to participate in our 401k? Oh, it has a match of 8%. And you're going to make a hundred grand. So the question would be yes or no. And I'm telling you, the answer is always yes, because that's how you take advantage of the perfect investment. Now, not only do you say yes, but George, you're right. You have to put eight grand of your own money into that account. It's called a 401 account, 401k. That's the number in the IRS code. And you have to put eight grand of your own money in there. So what happens when you do that, George? You put eight grand in your own 401k. This is the perfect investment. What, what happens? It comes right out of your check and it goes right into that account and then the company funds their half or their match. So now how much do you have in your 401k, George? You put eight grand in, they put eight grand in. How much do you have in your account the first year? Amazing, isn't it? It's totally crazy. That's why I call it the perfect investment. You know what's really crazy? So many people leave that money on the table like they don't fund that full eight grand maybe they put three grand in or whatever because they think that's all they can afford and i'm telling you it's the biggest one of the biggest mistakes i've ever seen and i don't want you to make that mistake it's the perfect investment so what else happens george someone out there who's in accounting help us understand the other benefit not only are you getting the match, but you're putting that eight grand of your money into your 401k to save it for retirement. What else happens behind the scenes? Like when April 15th comes along, my birthday, which happens to be tax day. Compound interest, yep, that's definitely one. And we're going to talk about that next week, how we really can leverage and maximize the growth. But that's another conversation. I'm just talking about the basic accounting for the perfect investment before we ever get into any returns that come from actual investments. We're just talking about a type of account and you making the decision to have money withdrawn from your paycheck into this account so the company matches it. And there's one more thing that happens that's pretty cool that saves you money. Sounds like a win-win. It's a win-win-win. There's another win. A win-win. You get, you get well, win-win win-win. So there's one more win. Because you pay taxes when you take money out of a 401k at retirement. That's right. That's half right. George. Oh, So yes, deep, you said it. You get a tax deduction. Eight grand. If you're making eight grand, if you're making a hundred thousand a year and you put eight grand in your 401k, the IRS says, hey, you only made 92,000 this year. Therefore, you're only going to have to pay taxes on 92 grand. That means you saved whatever taxes you would have paid on that 8000 That just goes in your pocket. Now, yes, you have to pay that when you take it out at retirement. But trust me, I'm going to show you why 
all the years you have to invest that and have it grow in a tax deferred way so that when you retire, hopefully your taxes will be lower than when you're making a lot of money throughout your career. It's a beautiful thing, the perfect investment. So now you understand how that 401k works. Uh, there, yeah, there's two different kinds of 401k, and you're going to do that in your homework. You're going to identify a Roth 401k and a traditional 401k. But that's beyond the scope of just talking about the perfect investment. So before I wrap up, I told you I'd tell you what the four investment strategies are that we're going to talk about next week. Four investment strategies that are specifically designed to maximize your returns and minimize your risk. Number one is diversification. You can Google that. You're going to get some homework to understand what diversification is. It's the most basic risk management strategy in investing. Number one is diversification. Number two, the most powerful investment strategy designed to help you maximize return and minimize risk is asset allocation. You're going to have to learn what different asset classes are to really understand the power of asset allocation, but nothing else has a greater impact on the results of your portfolio more than asset allocation. So diversification, asset allocation, and then dollar cost averaging. It's, it, in my opinion, it's the most powerful risk management strategy, and it's the most powerful way to grow your investments over a long period of time, dollar cost averaging. I'm going to teach you dollar cost averaging through a story about Farmer Joe. You don't want to miss that. Finally, after dollar cost averaging, we have portfolio rebalancing, which is very similar to dollar cost averaging. Uh, and you can imagine what portfolio rebalancing is if you can imagine what it means to balance a portfolio to begin with, which will be part of your homework assignment this week. So those are the four investment strategies that I'm going to teach you next week that are designed to maximize returns and minimize risk. Along with the perfect investment, if, if you learn what I'm about to teach you in the next week, I promise you achieving your retirement goals will become a whole lot easier than you ever imagined. So pay attention, be with us. Now next week I'm going to be in Michigan. So I've got to put this lesson together on the road, but hopefully I've done it before. So I won't be making it up as I go and you shouldn't get gypped at all. So I hope that helps. Thanks for the safe travels going to Michigan to see my mom. I lost my dad last year. And so it's a treasure to get to go spend time with my mom. My wife and I are going to go. So we'll wear masks. We've got them. You guys have a great week and stay safe. And I'll see you soon. Take care. That was a smile. Okay, have a great week. If you got a question, uh, yeah, Alexander, you're right. Family is so important. If you got a question, pop it in now, and I'll be happy to hang around. Otherwise, I'll see you soon. You guys are doing a great job, and I appreciate it. Okay, I don't see any questions going once. Yes, George. <laughs> so what'd you do for your assignment? <laughs> I wouldn't worry too much about the capstone. That's the least. I mean, I want you to understand how the insurance works and what those coverages are, but that you're not going to get marked down for not having, you know, just put a comment in your capstone assignment. Don't worry about, don't waste any time on that. That's kind of funny. Um, I don't blame them either. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, you know, 
it really does work better if you already have insurance and you go to your agent and you do, you know, you can tell them I'm trying to learn this. And most of the time they will really appreciate that. But it's a different thing if you're a professional and somebody's just using you, <laughs> which is what you were doing. So I'm glad that bugged you. That's a good thing. You got a good conscience. Yep. That's so cool. And I would so much rather, I don't mean to interrupt there, George. I was just going to say I would so much rather go to State Farm and get quotes because they're not going to sell your email address and shop it around and broker it with a hundred other companies, which is what happens if you go to insurancequote.com. You're basically asking everybody out there to give you a quote. And you, yeah, so Erica, that was a smart move. I mean, you probably get some calls from State Farm agents, but cool. Cool. That's good. That's good. Thanks for sharing that. So you good, George? You you bet. All right, man. Thanks for asking. Okay, I'm going to go shut her down unless there's any other conversation or question. Going once. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, George. Y'all take care. I'll see you on the next video or the next Zoom. Take care.